Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're gonna to talk about ginger, an herb that can be quite useful for a lot of different conditions. So what is it, how much should we take, and what are some of the benefits of taking ginger? Let's get right into it. So ginger has been used globally for flavor and health benefits. It's actually been used for thousands of years in India and in China, maybe for about a thousand years in Europe. So it's a anti-emetic, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, anti-hyperglycemic, anti-tumorgenic, antioxidant, and an immune modulator. What does that all mean, right? So if you break it down, it helps with nausea, inflammation, uh, infection, blood sugar, tumor growth, it's an important antioxidant because there's a lot of flavonoids in there and an immune modulator, right? So the basic uses is for pain, for nausea, particularly after like chemotherapy or during pregnancy or people who actually have motion sickness in the car, they feel nauseous. So sometimes using ginger can be quite beneficial for that. It also affects pain and inflammation and cardiovascular and blood sugar. So the way it affects cardiovascular system is one, it can uh, vasodilate your blood vessels, so decreasing blood pressure, but it's an anti-inflammatory. So if you decrease inflammation, you're gonna impact cardiovascular health. It also will impact blood sugar because it improves insulin sensitivity um, and also it improves gastric motility. So people have constipation and so forth. So there's a lot of different benefits. And the way it affects, let's say, the GI tract is it affects the serotonin uh, receptors. So 5-HT3 uh, can be affected. So it's going to improve GI motility. It's also going to improve insulin response, um, uh, the nausea uh, sensation, etc. It also will decrease uh, cravings, uh, so hunger, etc. So it can be a great way uh, to utilize if you're doing intermittent fasting and so forth. Another thing is in terms of delivery, you can use it in foods and teas, powders, extracts uh, uh, from capsules, etc., and liquid forms. Now, in terms of powder, uh, they're going to use different um, standardized extracts. You want to probably use about 5% standard extract of gingerol. And let's get into some of the components of that. So when we look at ginger, there are two main components that we look for, the two primary components, and one is six gingerol, and that's from the plant's rhizosomes, and then this six shogal, when the rhizosomes are heated and then dried, right? We really want this aspect of it. So most standardized extracts and supplements are gonna be about 5% of this ingredient, right? And that's what we're looking for when you do uh, supplementation. Now, can there be some irritation to the GI tract? Sure, it's a spice. So some, uh, if you take a lot of ginger, it can irritate your GI lining for some. It can cause nausea, although it can help with nausea, uh, just because of the dosaging. It can create headaches, sometimes respiratory issues. There's been known uh, uh, increased bruising and, and flushing of our system because it vasodilates. So if you're on blood thinners, you gotta be careful. Uh, with that, dosage is one to three grams of the plant rhizosomes, right? Basically, if you took ginger, uh, if you took one to three grams, you should be pretty safe. You can take as much as uh, five grams or more. Sometimes that will create some issues with GI irritation and so forth. So if you stay around three grams, you should be fine. Now, what I recommend typically for patients is just try the ginger tea first, right? So you take let's say a thumbnail length of ginger, cut it really thin, and then you put it in water. So you boil water and you put some um, slices of ginger into the water and let it boil for maybe five minutes, right? Then you take a little bit of raw honey for flavor, put it into the tea, and then you can also use lemon or lemon juice. So you can squeeze half a lemon or a full lemon. It really depends on your taste, right? Um, can it also 
be quite tasty and be a substitute for, let's say, mor morning coffee. So it's a good way to start the morning. And it's also good when you're intermittent fasting to use a tea like this because it helps with the insulin response and so forth. So it's a great alternative um, anti-nausea type of um, uh, remedy as well as GI motility, but it also has a lot of antioxidant effects. So it's a good supplement to try. So my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.